practical pointers for Unit 3 practicals and it's part two. So it's the final video covering those Unit 3 practicals, all part of Leaving Cert Biology Revision, where Section B of your paper is fully to do with those practicals. Remember, Section B is worth 15% and we all want 15%. So it's really worth your while spending time revising the practicals and knowing them all, because on the day you want to be able to complete all of the questions on Section B to get that 15%. In recent years, the practical questions have involved lots of little short questions on a mix of the practicals. However, this year you might be asked to outline how you did a particular practical. So you would need to know the full details, why you do each step and the reason for it. So know the practical details in full and please ensure you're using your textbook. There are other videos to help, but always use your textbook. On to the first practical. To investigate the effect of IAA growth regulator on plant tissue. This is quite a detailed practical. There's lots of steps that you would have to know why they're done. So IAA is indolacetic acid. It's an auxin, a growth regulator, and it causes cell elongation. It has different effects on the roots and the shoots. It depends on the concentration. IAA is produced in the apical meristems, stems, the root tips and shoot tips of plants. At higher concentrations, IAA will stimulate shoot growth and inhibit root growth. And then at very low concentrations, IAA will stimulate root growth and have no effect on shoot growth. But at very high concentrations, IAA inhibits both shoot and root growth. The aim of the practical is to examine how different concentrations of IAA will affect the growth of roots and shoots in radish seeds. Very important to remember radish seeds. The first part of the practical is very important because a stock solution of IAA was prepared by your teacher and you must remember that the teacher prepared the stock solution. A stock solution means the concentration is known and this stock solution is going to be diluted downwards. So a serial dilution will take place using the stock solution. You're going to gradually make it more and more dilute. You could be examined on how you did the serial dilution. I would ask you that. So you get eight small bottles and label them as above. Into the first bottle, you're going to place 10 mils of your stock solution and into all the others, nine mils of distilled water. So 10 mils of stock solution and all the others just have nine mils of distilled water. Out of the stock solution, take one mil with a clean pipette and transfer it into the second bottle and mix it. And you're going to do this the whole way along, taking one mil out of each bottle and putting it into the next. And each time you do that, you're going to use a clean pipette to do the transfer. So one mil out of one bottle into the next, mix, clean pipette, one mil out of that bottle into the next. So you continue on until you reach the second glass or the penultimate bottle and you're going to take the one mil out of that 10 to the minus four bottle and you're going to put it in the sink. You're not going to transfer it into the final bottle. That final bottle should contain only distilled water. It's going to act as your control. So your cereal dilution is now complete. Bottle zero, remember, contains just distilled water. That's your control. And each time you performed the dilution, each bottle became more dilute or less concentrated than the previous one. For each bottle, get a Petri dish and place clear grid acetate. That's going to help you measure any growth. Along the centre of the acetate, place your five radish seeds. You must use five because they're your replicates. Onto the top of this, place some filter paper and wet it with some of the solution out of the bottle. Then place some cotton wool on top of the filter paper and pour the remainder of the bottle and you're going to seal up your dish. So you should have sitting on your acetate, your five radish seeds, on top of that some filter paper, on top of that your cotton wool and that's soaked in the solution pertaining to that bottle. Each dish is sealed and labelled and then you stack it on its side. It's important to stack it on its side because you want the roots to grow down and the shoots to grow up. That will make it easier to measure. You're going to place it in the incubator for two to three days and 25 degrees Celsius has worked well for us. Remove from the incubators and you want to find out how much the average growth has been for the roots and the shoots in each plate. You're going to use those average results to get the percentage stimulation in comparison to the controls. So you have to use that formula. Very important. So remember, you're comparing it against the control, the distilled water, and you plot your results and you should get a graph like this. At very low concentrations of IAA, there's high root and low shoot stimulation. At higher concentrations, it's the opposite. There is high shoot shoot stimulation but low root stimulation and then at highest concentrations of IAA there is no root or shoot stimulation. It's inhibited.
So that's one practical that's worth revising in detail. I would look that over again if I were you guys. Next practical is germination. You're investigating the effect of water, oxygen and temperature on germination because each of those three factors are essential. Each time you're going to remove one of the factors from the seeds and the seeds that you will use are again radish seeds. So cotton wool and radish seeds and remove each factor every time. So no oxygen, cool boiled water with a layer of oil, Then there's no water. Then you put it in the fridge for an unsuitable temperature. And the last one gets all three factors. And you could have an alternative setup where you use Petri dishes. But instead of the cool boiled water and the layer of oil, you use an anaerobic jar. The results are as expected. Germination will only take place in the container or test tube where all three factors were present. And that's the same with the alternative setup. Germination will only have occurred where there is oxygen, water and that suitable temperature. Very last practical, to use starch agar plates to show digestive activity during germination. And so you're going to use broad bean seeds and they have been soaked for 24 hours to break dormancy. That's very important. Out of your four seeds, two seeds were boiled. This was to ensure no enzyme activity because boiling will denature enzymes. And then you had two fresh seeds where there will be enzyme activity. And because you're using Petri dishes, aseptic technique applied, flaming instruments, cleaning down the benches with disinfectant, etc. An aseptic technique is important because you want no contamination by other microorganisms. You want to prove that any enzyme activity on that dish is due to the enzyme in the seeds, the amylase in the seeds only. Each of your four seeds were cut in half using a backed blade, transferred into disinfectant solution for 10 minutes and then positioned with the cut halves facing onto the sterile starch agar plates using aseptic technique. Starch is the nutrient. So you should have two plates, one with the boiled seeds and one with the unboiled seeds. They are sealed and they're placed in an incubator for 48 hours. So they were left in the incubator for 48 hours at 25 degrees Celsius. After that 48 hours, the plates were removed, opened and the seeds were removed. Both plates were flooded with iodine solution. The results. In the boiled seeds, the whole plate turned blue-black, indicating there was absolutely no amylase enzyme activity. In the plate that had contained the unboiled seeds, there were light patches where the seeds had been positioned, indicating that there was no longer starch there. Amylase had acted on the starch and converted it to maltose. So amylase is active in germinating seeds. It breaks down starch into maltose. So that's the end of practical pointers. We have covered unit one, unit two and unit three in two parts. So please use your textbook to revise those practicals. You'll get lots more detail, which is very important. The very best of luck with all of that revision. Hope it's going well.